do a quick video on, uh, hence the shaky cam, sorry about that. Uh, it's a bank holiday here and I wasn't planning on doing filming again. Um, but the, I want to do a quick video on decoration. Um, there's a, there's a, 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 I wouldn't say mysticism is probably the wrong word, but there's, there's a feeling that uh, decoration is really difficult. And, and honestly, in a lot of the later 14th century, early 15th century stuff, the forms of decoration that were being done um, were generally quite naive. Uh, there's uh, Henry V's helmet, I think it is, off the top of my head. I'll find a picture of it. Um, has some of the border work, which I believe is original, uh, around the base of the helm. And it's, it's I, I keep using the word naive, because it's, it's a nice way of saying it's really not that great. Um, it did its function back in the day. And nowadays, we've sort of come to tackling things like decoration in a sort of, I don't know, post-Renaissance, the great masters of um, Michelangelo and Negroli, and then even later, people who I've no idea of their names in the 17th and 18th century did this most amazing work. Um, but in the 13th, 14th and early 15th century, a lot of this work was done with chisels and um, quite roughly. Uh, because it, it fulfilled, I'm guessing anyway at this, it fulfilled its purpose by being there. Um, if you couldn't afford that sort of stuff, then you didn't have anything on there. So anyone who's got some stuff, some decoration on their armour, was already making a statement. Um, and to be honest, as they're going past and you get the flash of brass, gold or copper or whatever it is, uh, the decoration would have looked glorious. Um, you know, it would look fantastic. They... they, they their concentration was on other things. Their emphasis, I think, was on other things than the actual precise uh, nature of that decoration, which plays into our hands a little bit because we can crack on and, and just have a go. And if we go over the lines or we cross a couple of lines on a bit of piece, it doesn't matter. In fact, in some respects, it makes it look more authentic, in my opinion. And again, as ever, don't use that as an excuse for laziness. You know, you do the best you can. Now, I was fortunate years ago um, to go to India. Um, and there was a chap in the street making bowls out of brass, which I think had uh, the various uh, gods and so on on that brass. And I was amazed. He was basically working, um, I think, in a little bowl of pitch. Uh, and these plates, some of them, the circumference was two or three feet wide. Um, and he, his total tool set was a couple of, honestly, was a couple of nails and a broken hammer. And the workmanship uh, that he was producing was fantastic. Unfortunately, it was so long ago, I wasn't really into what I do now. Um, otherwise, I'd have had lots and lots of pictures. But just seeing this guy sat there on the side of a road, working so fast and so well with nothing other than a couple of nails and a hammer, uh, has stuck with me uh, to the present day when I'm doing this work. Now, if you're doing uh, work to represent the... 14th century, late 14th century, early 15th century. Dare I say it, but the guys whose work we're following, whilst they were master craftsmen in their day and all this sort of stuff, didn't have the specialist tools that we have available to us now, or many of them. They would have been using their equivalent of uh, nice tools, but to, these, to us these days, it's just a, a chisel, a, a, a basic uh, stamp, and a hammer, uh, which is why... If you keep the tools of a similar ilk to the ones that they had and up your skill, I think personally that you will end up representing the workmanship of their era. Um, much more than if you use modern, say, electric tools or, or um, you know, other, other things that weren't around at the time um, or being popularly used at the time, like acid etching in the 14th century, that sort of business. So what I've got here is a couple of the chisels that I've made um, and I think it helps achieve, excuse me, the shaky cam, I'll just grab a few more from up here. Oh, my bad shoulder not letting me get to it. There we go. There we go. And these are uh, hopefully going to come into focus soon. No, camera's going to mess me about. Oh, there we go. Some of the tools that I've made out of road bar. So this is the stuff you see on the sides of roads that the uh, workmen out there uh, to mark areas off and so on and they're often just discarded particularly up around here they went through a phase just discarding them in hedges because they got bent or whatever so I would go along and mine sweep them and um, use them 
to make tools from because they're made from very, very good steel. Or good tool steel, anyway. A final word on the tools. When you read about these things in books and you see them on forums and so on, there's constant references to the hardness and how to harden and temper them and, and all of this business. And it is important. You know, it will save you hours and hours of work having appropriately hardened tooling. Um, however, if you're in early days and you don't have a clue what you're doing, if you can get a good bit of steel, like this road bar, you know, for freebies from somewhere, cut, cut it off, have a go at it with your grinder, make the shape you want, and just be aware that every, you know, few minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever, you'll just need to resharpen the tool a bit with a couple of passes of a hand file. Um, and then you'll, you'll gradually get fed up with it or whatever, and your skill will grow because you'll learn how to properly harden and temper things. Don't allow yourself to become lost, in my opinion, to the worries of hardening and tempering tools. Armour is a different matter, of course. You know, if you've got a guy going out to joust, you don't want to sort of send him off with the idea of, well, you know, I wasn't quite sure on how to harden it, so best of luck to you, pal. Um, but your tooling, you can take that kind of attitude with as you learn. That's worth stating, uh, just while I'm doing this, I've received no formal training in how to or not to do this. Uh, I've just literally saw that guy all those years ago sat in the dirt with a nail and a hammer and um, thought, well, if he can produce wonderful works of art uh, as he was, then with the limited tools he had, then uh, excuse me, surely I can do something similar. So there's probably lots I'm doing wrong. So don't follow this as an exact example of how to hold the tools and work and everything. There's probably a lot of bad habits in here. Uh, but what I'm trying to illustrate is you can get started and you can produce nice stuff if you take the time. And just know that the first few bits you're going to do are just going to suck, um, in all likelihood. Uh, but, you know, with a bit of time and a bit of practice, um, you can produce stuff that would have been acceptable uh, certainly back in the uh, late 14th early 15th centuries using simple techniques like this so uh, we've got our two we've got our borders in now now we've got to try and figure out our wave I did one before just to show actually that it does go wrong over here I did one before and you know, I've, I've said a few times about not allowing the naivety of their work to be an excuse for laziness. I thought I had the uh, measure of this one and was knocking this out. I'll take a look at it and just thought, ah, oh, it's just rubbish. You know, you, yeah, sure. You could probably find, if you searched hard enough, examples where this would be acceptable, you know, even back in the day. But I know what I can do better uh, to better represent the decent craftsmanship of the period rather than the poorer craftsmanship of the period. Um, so uh, this one's going to go into the um, big bucket of experience. Uh, one of the mistakes I made is the border is about four mil, eighth of an inch or so too wide uh, here. So and, and just the frequency of the wave form uh, was wrong. Some of the leaves were the wrong shape and so on. So I uh, just show it goes wrong, you know, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm no uh, Sorry again, you go. I'm no Hugo Serrano, I'm no Douglas Pryor, I'm just a guy with a nail and an inappropriately used hammer. So, uh, you know, give it a whirl. So I'm going to draw on my next bit of the pattern, uh, try and get that satisfactory uh, down on here, and then start doing the uh, vines or grapes or uh, whatever they are.
I've still got to put the, um, I keep calling them berries, but they're on the leaves, so I guess it's just a bit of decoration on the leaf, on the leaf. but I've still got to put three dots on the majority of these leaves here. Um, but you can see how, with a fairly primitive tool set, and not a whole lot of time, you can get the basic medieval look. And once that's um, been polished and tidied up, so some of these ruffle marks you can see on some of the lines here will be gone. Um, it's a good approximation of what you see uh, chiseled into um, a lot of medieval stuff. Uh, the decoration and so on on armour. Um, it's, it's surprisingly straightforward to achieve that. Um, see if my camera will cope that close. That look, it's and 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 you know, I'll, I'll put up a few pictures of some examples, and you can see it's it's really that rough. But then when you see it, obviously, on phone, when you see it in its entirety on the cuff with the dots, berries or whatever they are, all added and so on, it's just the part um, up close. If my phone will cope, come on. Up close, it doesn't bear a lot of scrutiny. You know, um, it really doesn't. But uh, like I say, I'll put up some original pieces as well, and you'll see they're just this sort of quality. So it's a, a really close approximation of what you see, and you don't need to overwork it, um, at least not on this this period of armour. So there you go. What I'll do, I'll, I'll do a follow-up one with this, where I sand it back and uh, polish it up and show it in situ uh, sometime during next week. Um, so uh, I hope that's useful and shows that you can just crack in, uh, crack on and crack into this sort of stuff with relatively few tools and um, a little bit of patience and away you go. So uh, there we are and um, I'll see you on the next video.